So rather than there be a decrease in food poisoning, there is an increase in food poisoning. More poultry is eaten, especially the intensively reared cheaper poultry, which are bred in insanitary conditions in close confinement with each other. So the chickens are pecking at each other's urine and feces, and a lot of that disease then is going inside those chickens. Eating out more, our lifestyles are changed. So we go out to cafes, restaurants and pubs, and we eat eating food that's prepared by other people. More ethnic takeaways in restaurants. This is mainly due to the language problem, trying to find a good food hygiene course in the native tongue. So you've got Indians, Chinese, Turks, you've got Libyans. It's not to do with the fact that they've got poor ideas of food hygiene, it's because they can't get a course in their own tongue to actually train them in good food hygiene practices. Incorrect handling of chilled food. When you buy ready to eat chilled food, you must keep it chilled. Because that food, if it contains bacteria or spores, then as the food gets warmer, the spores and bacteria will start to multiply and can actually make you ill. Now what I always say in these courses, even from a domestic point of view, if you're buying chilled food at a supermarket, make sure you keep it chilled. And I'm talking about ready to eat chilled food such as sandwiches, baguettes, cold cooked meats, cold cooked poultry, scotch eggs, pork pies, etc. When you buy these items, you must keep them chilled. So the best thing to do is to take uh, an ice box with you and some ice packs and perhaps keep the food chilled that way. An easier way would be to mix your frozen goods with your chilled goods in the same carrier bag and that will keep the temperature down. But we will look at temperatures later on. Another one there is less preservatives are used. We used to use a lot of chemical preservatives in food, but over the years scientists have found that certain preservatives can have adverse effects on humans, so they've taken them out of the food chain. We tend to use a lot more natural preservatives these days, such as salt, sugar and vinegar. And the last point there, intensive farming or feeding. Intensive farming, I've just mentioned when we look at more poultry eaten, i.e. You've got a lot of poultry in a, in a small compact space. The other one is intensive feeding. This is where farmers, to try to be more competitive with, say, European imports, they supplement animals' feeds with high-protein foods. And these are usually based on fish or animal derivatives. So.